Okay, so today I want to talk to you about uh, disrupting education or convince you. Obviously, I'm preaching to the choir a bit here, but I thought it was worthwhile to go over these ideas since we are in FA school. Appreciate that. Uh, but in order to do that, I first want to tell you a story. The story of Old Man Tassos. <laughs> Uh, so, old man Tassos, when he was 18 years old, he was the oldest 18 year old there was. Uh, this is actually a picture of him. <laughs> uh, he didn't have a lot of guidance when he was uh, going to school. Uh, so, but he did love learning quite a bit. Uh, these are some of the fields that old man Tassos took, uh, that I took in college. Uh, I took courses in all of these subjects, uh, and not just a little bit, I really spent a lot of time in school doing this. Um, here's a picture of me in college, <laughs> uh, going to school. Um, here are, this is actually a short list of classes that I took uh, prior to making school. Uh, I took classes in music, and, and you know everything from humanities to technical <laughs> fields and mathematics and things of that nature. I finished ultimately with a bachelor's in economics and had minors in mathematics and uh, physical anthropology. Uh, I finished two thirds of my master's uh, in, in economics, had to leave for personal reasons. Uh, over 210 credit hours of school in traditional education. <laughs> so I really loved school and I really consumed it uh, as a consumer of school. Um, but I want to sort of like talk about uh, education as uh, a sort of supply and demand model and give you a framework to think about make school in terms of the broader picture. So here is a very basic circular flow model of goods and services. You have a consumer, you have a producer, the consumer gives money in exchange for goods and services. Very simple. Now when you're young, most of you are consumers. So you're a consumer up until 18, you've pretty much just been involved in that behavior your whole life. The process of educating someone and moving is really a process of transforming them from being a consumer to being, for the first time in their lives, somebody who can make or produce and contribute to the world. So <clears throat> let's look at this in education. So education is a service. You have a student and you have the school, consumer and the producer. The consumer gives over money and the producer gives knowledge, or at least that's the idea. So, <clears throat> you guys remember this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Bernie liked the idea of free education for all, and he was espousing this idea, I don't think because he believes necessary education is so amazing, but because I, I think he, he sees education as what it is, which is an investment not as a consumptive service. So, uh, basically, oh, and also it was me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, let's look at an investment model for education. Um, you got a whole bunch of unskilled uh, people, which is basically what you are when you're 18 years old. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, you know, somebody that's an investor chooses to take the venture of investing in you as human capital, uh, and you go to school. If you do well, you become a professional, and that should pay a profit to the investor. If you don't do well, then that's a loss, that's a risk that is incurred by that investor, okay? <laughs> so this is the opportunity space here, and this is the risk space, okay? So now let's go back to our old model, and let's look at uh, where's the opportunity and risk here? It's so all right there. It's all on you. So it's all up to you at 18 years old to make a decision that's going to basically incur whether or not this is like worthwhile or not, your whole education. So I was unknowingly kind of doing that. I was just like, I like school and consuming it, but I had not really a strong idea or guidance about the risks I was taking when I was going and you know taking out loans and learning all this really cool stuff. So. Uh, on the other end is a lot of money uh, because they get paid by the government. They don't have to worry about the debt after that. Uh, it's a great deal for them. They have, you know, schools have not a lot of incentive to to change uh, because you assume all the risk. So basically, uh, students as consumers means the following: academics becomes about prestige, 
for strategies maximized through research and theory, so that's what the emphasis becomes, uh, members, which means that memorization becomes uh, prioritized over implementation like we do here at May School. And the most important thing is that the outcomes are completely irrelevant. Incentives don't line up. They don't care whether you get a job or not. So you can study all those classes. doesn't mean you're going to have any increase in your income. So, <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, so that was the last piece. So for old man Tassos, he found a school, a community, where he learned how to make a game in two weeks. It just took him two weeks to do that. I think we all kind of can realize here that we don't need four-year degrees to be able to code and make uh, interesting products. Uh, Jeremy and Ashley took their philosophy and turned it into a business model. Uh, in summary, education is about investment. Education is about believing uh, in the ability for individuals to transform from consumers to producers. Education does not currently work this way today. And this means opportunity for huge growth, disruption, and even revolution in this space. Uh, congratulate yourself for not falling for the scam and being here. And welcome to Revolution National Headquarters. Thank you. All right. 